One man came there, in his hands there was a rotten bone, bone of a dead person, rotten. He must have excavated from some very old grave. Muhammad is sitting together with the Sahaba and he said, look at this bone and he crushed it with his hand, it was immediately powder. Hmm? <coughs> and before the Prophet and all of them sitting, he just threw the powder in air and said, Man Who is going to give life, reanimate these bones which have already been crushed? That means he was challenging the teaching of the Prophet that this life is meaningless. You are going to be born, grow, die, perish. Finished. This is what those people teach us who have no purpose in life that is leading us to live hedonic life means whatever pleases you is good that means it may please you to fornicate to commit adultery it may please you to drink it may please you to gamble it may please you to usurp somebody's right it may please you to fill your tummy at the expense of somebody else it may please you therefore it is right <coughs> this is a philosophy of hedonistic philosophy which took us to an extent human thinking that we were told even thieving and stealing was good. Why? Because if there had been no stealing, people would not have learned how to protect their property. Naturally, you would not lock your car if there were no thieves, were you, would you? So who gave you sense of protection? A thief. Therefore he's good. <laughs> I'm talking from the books of philosophy, I'm not concocting my stories. This is how we were told things, that we were told to believe in such things, so that everything that pleases you is good, because you are going to live here for a few days, few years, and perish. There is no purpose in it. And the prophet says that there is a purpose in it. You are living here for a purpose. And then there is a continuity into the hereafter. Therefore see that you don't commit sins and you don't displease your creator. And that you live a valuable, purposeful life. There is a vast difference in these two. And when he said this, the prophet got a revelation. Wahi immediately, which is in Quran, call. Oh prophet, tell him. I mean, you are talking of a bone, crushed bone, which is powder, and you say, who will give life to it? Tell him, at least there is some matter in your hand. You are asking about a matter, although it is a bone, but it is a matter. What about he who created when there was no matter? You are asking about reanimation of something which is a dead matter, but he created you from note from something which was not there. Who, who can create from no matter can definitely create from a matter. This is what the answer Allah gives. Then you are told that there is life hereafter. If I am going to have some 10 minutes just to deal with what he said about life hereafter and finish it because I know it is most unsettling. But he said, that death is bound to come. Young or old, sick or healthy, comes. And it comes with the order of God. When the ajal has come, there can be no change, half a minute or half a second, this way or that way. It may be due to any reason. A healthy man just talking to us goes home and you get a phone, died. A sick person is on the sick bed for years and a healthy man. Doctor comes and diagnoses what happened, thrombosis. The causes are different but the path is same. When Malakul Moth was told by Allah that the assignment given to you is Qabza Ruh, that means to cause death. He is not alone, there are many Malaika. Many Malaika who are assigned with the work of 
causing death, Qabzaru, but the chief of them is Malakul Maut. In one household, somebody very old died, Iran. <coughs> And the boy started crying, and they cried a lot. So somebody said, why do you cry? An old man of 90 was about to die. I mean, there shouldn't be so much of crying for an old man of 90. The son said, we are crying for him. We knew that he was going. We are crying that the Malakul Moth has seen the house. <laughs> <laughs> he never knew this address. <laughs> now he has seen the house, so he will visit oftener. Up to now we were safe. I had a friend in Dar es Salaam, very old. Friend, I said, because we were friendly. So I used to ask him, what is your age? He said, no, don't ask. Somebody will overhear. I said, who will overhear? I am here and you are. He said, Malakul Moth will overhear. <laughs> if he knows that I am already 80, he will start chasing me. <laughs> so don't ask me my age. And I believe, he used to say, I believe my file has been lost up there. Otherwise, I would have gone to Mephil Abbas long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Mephil Abbas in Dar Islam is a place where there is a Husl Khan. <laughs> so he used to tell me that my file up there has been misplaced somewhere. Otherwise I would have been Mephil Abbas long ago. But don't ask me my age because somebody will over here. But Malakul Maut was assigned this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Malak, you have to do this. And immediate response was, Ya Allah, you will make me most unpopular. Because if your human beings come to know that my job is to cause death, then I am going to be cursed every day. So Allah said, you will not do it direct. No, no, no. What, hap what will happen is that people will not talk that a certain man has died because of Malakul Maut. No. People will talk that certain men died of heart disease, accident, cancer, malaria, black fever, whatever it be. This will be the cause is assigned. Nobody will say that so and so died because Malakul Maut came. Although it will be because Malakul Maut came. And this is how it is today. That we all talk. He died. What did he, brain hemorrhage he died. You know, he died because of Malakul Maut. إِذَا جَاءَ عَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ No medical reprieve is available for one who is destined to die at that particular hour. He must die. But he said that when death is approaching, be prepared for it. Don't say, Mullah Sahib, don't talk, please. Oh, a Ghusl Khana has been built somewhere here. And if you tell someone just to visit, not for dead body, just there is a jug there to bring, he won't go. <laughs> there is a jug, he says, no, I don't enter Ghusl Khanas. Why? There's no dead person there. There's nothing, no ghusl to be given today. But he fears entering the place as if somebody is there waiting to trap him. There is nobody there. But if there's a dead person to be given ghusl, I'm pleased to say that nowadays, alhamdulillah, many youths volunteer and say we would like to learn. But there was a time when people said, please, do it yourselves and finish it. Because we just don't want to come by. Why? Because what will happen if he stands up? <laughs> Let us, a person with whom you are mingling during his lifetime, you had no fear of him at all. You are afraid of him when he's now silent forever. Hmm? Suppose he rises. If he rises, tell him, thank you, come back to life. Welcome. It doesn't happen. If it happens, it happens by the will of God. What happens if he rises? People have risen from the grave also. After having put them in the grave with coffin, sometimes they <coughs> shake, sneeze and stand up and say, Salaam Alaikum. What happens? At that time some people run away, some people faint. And then they come back and embrace him and take him home. This has happened. But that doesn't happen every day. But why are we afraid? The Prophet said that visit one who is dying. Halatu ihtiva. And see how he is dying. And think that this is what is going to happen to you once. This is the end of it all. And when you will reach that stage, whether it is a split of a second, God forbid, by accident, when a man dies instantly, or whether it is by heart failure or heart attack, whatever they call it, or whether it is by prolonged illness, there is always a moment of Sakratul Maut. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ 
Sakratul Maut is an intoxication before death. An ecstasy before death. Where a man in a split of the second reviews all his life and sees it just like a movie. This is what he did. In that split of a second he sees everything. Allah says it must come. Sakratul Maut. See how he dies. And don't start crying and weeping when a man is dying. When a person is dying, don't stand there to weep. If you cannot withhold yourself, go away. Let other people stand. Teach him and remind him to read La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasul. Teach him. <coughs> remind him to say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadur Rasul. Read Dua Mashlul in his presence. Read Yasin when he is still alive. Read Surah Wasafat when he's alive. Read Surah Yasin when he's alive. Read Ayatul Kursi when he's still alive. And read to him. And if he can repeat, and if his speech is still on, let him follow you as you say, La ilaha illallah. He also says, La ilaha illallah, till he breathes his last. At that time, make him sleep. Or cause him to sleep with his feet towards Qibla. If this is Qibla, turn his bed and let him sit, sleep towards Qibla. Wajib. Wajib to turn Mayit or the, the dying person towards Qibla. One has got to have that presence of mind. And when the man dies, immediately shut his mouth. If it means tying, tie it. And shut his eyes and cover the whole body. And say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We are all for God. And to him shall we return. But stand there. And see, this is the sum total of my life. Am I dying a person who is going to leave behind a fragrance of my life? Or am I just leaving behind my pesa? Listen to what people talk. People talk one thing. How much has he left? Malaika say, how much has he sent in advance? This is the difference. The Prophet said, people talk, Kitra chadivyo. Kitra chadivyo means how much has he left behind? Mapesa, properties, assets, and all that. Malaika say, how much has he sent in advance? Whatever, little, but in advance. To give in advance, is much better than to live, to leave for the heirs to pay afterwards. Give it with your own hand. Even if it means one small piece, but with your own hand in your own lifetime, has much more value than that which is done in charity after you have died by your heirs, because they are obliging you. While here you are doing it yourself, obliging yourself. See that. And this is what gives me a thinking that for all that halabaloo, for all the sweating of my eyebrow, for all the uneasiness, for all the quarrels we have had, for all the mud slinging that we have been doing against each other, for everything that we did to see that ours was sustained and yours was destroyed, to, to see everything goes wrong, to kill someone, to assassinate, or to do character assassination by issuing things, circular authorities. For what? For these two, three minutes when a man dies and goes. Qul, inna al-mawta alladhi tafirruna minhu, fa innahu mulaqikum thumma turadduna ila alim al-ghaybi wa shahada that death from which we are all running away and trying to escape shall visit you. I mean, there's no question of you visiting death. Death visits us. Death shall visit you one day and shall take you to him, the master, who knows all the secrets and all that which is revealed. And he will tell you what you have been doing. So let us live the way the prophet is told. Let us do some good turns. Let us acquire some knowledge for ourselves. Let us see that our, 
our generation becomes true Muslims and work for it. Let us change ourselves. Let us put a goal into our life. Even if it means, I say this and with all assurance, even if it means serving humanity regardless and irrespective of whether it is within the community or outside. Learn to live. Let us all learn to live. So that our life becomes meaningful and not only vegetation. Because that was the idea. Next Friday I'm going to say as to what was the teaching of the Prophet about Sakratul Maut up to Qayama and every step after death. So that we know that he is the one who told us of the continuity of life, giving meaning and purpose to this life so that we may live like true Muslims. Before I conclude, there is a request. There are so many people, ladies, who are ill. There is a child, who, as I said last time, from Pakistan, Sayyid child, who is still not well, and it seems that he might have to go back because there can be no operation upon his kidney. And then there's a request for, for a person for Qadai Hajjah, that all may pray that his Hajjah Allah may accept. Al-Fatiha.